Hello, people of the world of the internet. Welcome to this. My 1974 RA21 Toyota Celica with a 2UZ stuffed into it, which I just finished painting. If you're new and you have a thing for minty old Toyotas, well, it just so happens I'm actually giving away that one, 1982 Celica Supra. The link is in the video description below if you'd like to enter to win it. But today I'm not working on that because the wheels for this thing should be arriving from Japan today. So, I have some suspension work to do. Stay. If you haven't noticed already, this car is extremely difficult to move around the shop because there's not actually any steering linkage connected. Out. 1970s steering suspension and braking components out. Time to upgrade to the 80s. This is an ultrasonic cleaner. You place your hardware inside this little area. Hardware. Hardware. Just like so. Here you go. A little bit of cleaning solution in there. That's probably good. Water. Agua caliente. So, temperature control. Oh, that's the seconds. That's how long it works in seconds. And then on. Do your thing. I'm really curious. Okay, let it do its thing. These are fire, absolute fire. Techno toy, Swift Springs. That thing's actually kind of loud without being loud. The sound is like piercing. It's kind of how a water pick feels on your gums is what that feels like on your ears. Round one? Yeah, I'll do two rounds. Everything is so nice. Look at that hub. That is ridiculous. You can change your bolt pattern right there. Yes. That's what you call quality manufacturing. It actually has the torque spec laser etched into the plate. Love that. Assembly. God, this looks so good. The Loctite. Oh, what's my torque spec? Oh, I don't know. It's just printed right there on the spindle. How convenient. Four. Yeah, that's much better. All the parts laid out neat and organized. Now again, all this stuff is from Techno Toy Tuning. It wasn't sponsored, but they did give a generous 20% discount on everything here. That's, I guess that's what instructions are for. Using some high temp Loctite on all this hardware. The kit came with grade eight hardware. Personally, I prefer using the hardware that has a hole in the head that we can safety wire all the hardware on the back of the rotor. But I guess this is liquid safety wire. I literally almost assembled this backwards because I was looking at the instructions for an RA22 Celica. And this is a A86 steering kit. So yeah, I'll place the rotor on top of the hub, just like that. Loctite. Might be a little overkill with the lock washer, but... I'm cheating. Oh, 
Hello. Ow, my elbow just cracked. Welcome to the next day. Oh, it's so hard to open a Ziploc bag with grease all over your fingers. <laughs> no! That's pretty large. There's no way in hell this is the right one. This thing is huge. The seal's outside diameter is 54.26 millimeter. Inside diameter of this guy is 52.3. For obvious reasons, you want the outside diameter of the grease seal to be slightly larger than the hole that it's going into so it stays nice and snug. But 1.5 millimeters is not going to fit inside there. I don't care how hard I bash this thing in there, it's just gonna end up warping it and then causing an issue on the inside radius. Jeez, inside diameter works. It's really tight. Luckily, the grease seal is just an OEM one for a Corolla GTS or an AE86. Outside diameter, 53.250. Accidents happen. I'll just see if I can get a set of these today. Grease seals. Taco. Oh yeah, that fits. Aha! Like a glove. Perfect. Didn't come with a nut. Give me that, give me that, give me that nut. Rotor. Jeez. Wash ya. Nut. That's nice. That is so nice. <laughs> I love it. Bearing. Grease seal. The next part of the equation is these guys right here. Super evolved adjustable knuckles for most older Toyotas. Now I can set this up for drifty boy stuff, which that's not what this car is going to be used for. Or standard street or road race Ackerman. This is how I have it adjusted. See these little guys come out and you can reposition it because it's got a little cambered lobe. My day is about to get cut short because I got to do a live stream for you guys here in a minute. Can't forget these guys, little stainless steel inserts go in the center. Factory hardware. Can I use it? Let's see if I can reuse the factory hardware. Ah, uh, factory hardware is too short. Hardware. So next day, I got some hardware for this. Some metric M12 by 40 millimeter. An engineer would put the bolt in this way. That's how I'm going to do it. So that way the bolt can never fall out. 58 pound feet. All this stuff has to come back apart when I paint the engine bay, but I'm going to remove the entire suspension and front subframe of the whole assembly. So it makes sense to torque this stuff now. There you go. Would have been way easier to torque on the car, except for the fact that the top nut is up inside the strut. So arm day. Oh, so this is going to be fun. I have this conveniently set on a wide angle view because I'm going to wait and see if any of you have figured out the conundrum I'm about to be in here pretty soon. Also 58 pound feet, please. Yeah, I'm going to do that when it's all bolted together. Remember how I cleaned that hardware, the ultrasonic cleaner? Well, that's because I'm going to reuse these guys right here and they look pretty good. Not bad for 50 year old bolts. So I need to put this TC rod on the outermost hole. I think for stability reasons, it would be sloppy if I didn't. Obviously all this stuff is going to need an alignment. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it for now. I'm just using OEM inner and outer tie rods for now just in case these need to be cut. I didn't want to buy the expensive ones and then end up having them not work. So the little stainless steel sleeve is for the outer tie rod or the ball joint. It just slips right through there. I haven't hooked up the steering linkage up top yet. This guy right here, it needs to be cut to length since this is all custom up here on this end where it attaches to the steering column in the car. The whole point of doing all this is to make the car easier to move around the shop while I'm working on it. Uh, issue though is these are 300 millimeter rotors. I don't have tires on the new wheels yet, which you haven't seen. And these are 13 inch wheels. 300 millimeter rotor, 13 inch wheel. <laughs> There's no room for a caliper.
remember that thing I was talking about when I had it in wide angle? Uh, about that. There's one thing I didn't calculate for. See that mounting location right there? Yeah, that's where the front anti-sway bar bolts up. And, um, the, yep, oil pan. <laughs> so, bracket, uh, you don't need a front anti-sway bar. No. Wait a minute. Oh, it's right where the oil pickup tube is at also. That's sweet. Oh, now that I think about it, I I have an... I mean, yeah, look at this. Bounce right there. Oh, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I'm not gonna tear that off right now because literally I'm working on this car next. So I'll try it then, what I need to do. This is gonna be ridiculous. That rotor is literally like 10 millimeters from the inside barrel of this wheel. idea. What if? Uh, uh, why? <laughs> that ain't gonna work. Not that way. Yeah, uh, that's... It doesn't actually go near the pickup tube. It goes in front of the pickup tube. Nobody said this was easy, okay? So this, this is giving way more work back here. Pin hard bar, upper links, lower links, and this tiny little OEM rear axle. Upper links, lower links, pin hard bar, and rear axle. You could also do a race car sway bar where you build it yourself. This thing could be so high in the rear end. That is ridiculous. <laughs> It looks so dumb. The rear has to be lowered, obviously, but that's a big project. That requires welding. For straight out of the box, not adjusting these coilovers, this might actually be a usable ride height up front. I mean, keep in mind the flare, the wheel arch is way lower if the flare. When I get the rear that low, that actually might look good, just at that height. I'm gonna make you do this. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's pretty fire right there. That is gonna be sick when I got the wheels on it. Plenty of room for a nice meaty wheel. This is like a five and a half or a six inch wide wheel and what I ordered up front is an eight. So they're gonna be much bigger. I'll be able to do like a 225, 235 maybe. Nice meaty tire. My wild Charlie has appeared. I got an engineering problem for you. Here's a really good picture of a Cusco sway bar on an A86 Corolla. So it runs right parallel with the front mounting location of the TC rod. I could do something like this also. This is on a Celica forum. I think it's a 80s Celica, but they just ran a spacer and they spaced it down below the sump. I know the TC rods are probably slightly different on this, but... Like if you look from the side at the, yeah. the TC rod mount, and if you draw a straight line across, if it clears the oil pan, it's by like this much. My thought is the fact that this is all A86 subframe, all steering, suspension, is that it makes sense that the Hashiroku front anti-sway bar would also work. The only thing that's different is the TC rod mounting locations. But I think the R chassis and the AE chassis is almost identical. Like they're, they're so close. Yeah, it's gotta be really close. Yeah, because that's the TC rod mounting location, so it would literally just be barely in front of the sump. I mean, there's, a, there's enough room for it to run right here. So anyway, the next video is gonna be on the MA61 Celica Supra, which like I said, one of you will be able to enter to win. The link is in the video description below. I'm gonna finish that manual transmission swap, and then I got some more parts on the way for this thing. Unfortunately, the wheels I ordered for it from Japan are stuck at FedEx Customs right now. There was some goof, I guess, on the paperwork, and that's probably gonna move at a snail's pace, and I paid for express shipping to have them in time. So, uh, yeah. I guess I gotta wait now and hopefully I get those wheels in time. It'll be worth it when they get here. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!